Time for today's focus, and we are looking closer at the other big story out of Italy, not just this year, but for more than two years now, the arrival on Italian shores of thousands of migrants. Since January, 170,000 people are known to have reached Italy. After they've been identified, people deemed to have asylum claims are dispatched off to different regions of the country, each of which has its own approach to handling the influx. Basilicata in the south is one of the few regions to integrate its incomers into its labour force in small groups within different communities in an aim of aiding integration. Our correspondent Natalia Mendoza has been to see how it's working out. Ciao. A few words of Italian are enough to get acquainted with his new neighbours. It took something of an odyssey for San Jose and his family to get here. Having set out from Sierra Leone, he crossed Nigeria and Libya before embarking on a rickety ship from Tripoli towards Italy. Shortly after arriving, San Jose was moved here to Basilicata, a southern region that has organized a personalized integration process for each individual asylum seeker. Hello. 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 Yeah, how are we? Welcome. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Yeah. Now we, we make for, with you some question about your job. Yeah. Okay, your searching of job. What experience you have in your uh, own? Uh, I'm a builder. Some carpenter work. That, that's my profession. Matching training with professional experience. The aim, to understand how San Jose can fit into the local workforce. What kind of job do you want to search? Such a building job. Building job. If there is the opportunity to work like a plumber, for you is an op uh, yeah, option? It's an option okay. because it's on the building. In bilancio delle competenze, we gather information on everyone's skills, then we add their names to the register at the job centre that enables us to offer them training courses that match their skills and professional experience. It means we don't waste any time. Acting quickly, because examination of San Jose's request for asylum by the local prefecture is likely to take months. You have to cross the two ends. Mm. When, when, you go, when you go forward, do you have to come back? So while he waits, he takes part in a course on interior renovations. Today, it means repainting this community center. It's useful, useful for me. I'm learning new skills. Yeah, I'm learning to acquire a skill because I up not only one job is here. As I, was, I said before, not only one job you can depend on. After a period in a reception center, an independent apartment is assigned to San Jose and his family, because he wasn't alone when he set out for Italy. <laughs> his twins were born in Libya. That's where he spent four years working to pay for the passage for his whole family. My dream for my kids is for them to have good education and better life, the life that I, I, I cannot afford to have. The arrival of families like this is seen as a boon in this southern region that has been losing its residents. In the space of 10 years, Basilicata has lost more than 20,000 inhabitants. On the one hand, our young people leave to study in the north and often they don't come back. On the other, we have a problem because of our low birth rate. There are more deaths here than newborn babies. Marcello Pitella has been in charge of the region for the last three years. Convinced that immigration can be one of the keys to re-injecting life into Basilicata, he has tripled the number of asylum seekers accepted as compared to the regional quota fixed by the government. Should we submit to or channel this phenomenon? Immigration can be an opportunity and not just a burden for us. And it can help us respond to the need for repopulation, putting an end to depopulation and decertification. Repopulating to preserve public services. At the age of 16, Mohammed left Ivory Coast on his own. Since his arrival in Basilicata, he has been helping with the upkeep of this public retirement home. I come here to help them and bring them aid, as they are frail people. I say hello to them, and often I share a joke. 
Like the other unaccompanied minors disembarked in Italy and brought to this village, Mohammed cannot be expelled. The Italian state is obliged to house and educate him. Sometimes in our schools there aren't enough Italian pupils to fill a class, so we have to bring in different groups to do so. That can lower the level of the education. Thanks to the young immigrants, we can achieve the minimum number of pupils required for a class. Their presence is fundamental. That's the case in this school. Here the presence of young foreigners guarantees the survival of certain classes and the maintenance of the teachers. Read the text you've written. My name is Samir. I come from Egypt. I disembarked in Sicily. At the moment, some 7,000 holders of humanitarian visas live in Basilicata. In this rural region, many contribute to the agricultural workforce. Others are moving into services. Anthony, Anthony clean this top part. With his humanitarian residency permit in his pocket, Anthony has obtained a paid apprenticeship in this transport company. It's a first step towards building an autonomous life and supporting his family, who stayed behind in Nigeria. I have two children. I use it to help them. They are schooling in Nigeria. Yeah. My, my children are schooling in Nigeria. So you send the money back? So I, I use it to uh, help them. And I, I would like my family to be here. Anthony's chances of realizing his dreams are greater here than they would be elsewhere. In 2015, 40,000 foreigners worked in this region, which recorded growth of more than 5%, almost a miracle. Its governor no longer hides his ambition to export his model of integration to the rest of Italy, and then to Europe.